Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Yeah, it's been a week. I've been continuing doing all these assignments and quizzes for my astronomy online class. So I'm studying as hard for the next midterm that's coming up this week. Yeah, hard to believe. And the last movie review I did was the original Blade Runner, which had all the cuts. I still haven't seen the new sequel yet, but by any chance, I will and I'll definitely do a review on it. But for now, I want to review a movie that I saw a couple weeks ago and I was really looking forward to it called The Belko Experiment which is a movie that's set in an office building in Colombia where 90 employees are chosen to kill each other. So it's basically Battle Royale The Office Style <laughs> in a way. Yeah, and this is released by Ryan Pictures, which they've been releasing mostly uh, BOD releases and other direct-to-video material, as well as independent films, ever since the company had revived in 2013. Yeah, they actually revived it, starting with the release of Grace Unplug, uh, which is um, basically a Christian uh, type of film. And since then, they started releasing other films that follow. So the company's doing very well so far, and, and hopefully this company will will continue to do some more movies uh, in the future. I have the feeling that maybe by then they might be able to release some more major films. So let's hope so, <laughs> because so far this is supposed to be their um, their new comeback for releasing the. Um, basically um, major films here and I hope they do and they're actually teaming up with uh, Blumhouse Tilt or BH Tilt so this is a new uh, label for, for Blumhouse to release all their uh, titles either non-horror or or horror films that are multi-platforms in a way so they're trying to continue with that anyway um, it stars uh, John Gallagher Jr. from the movie Ten Cloverfield Lane. Tony Goldwyn has been best known for films like Ghost, Traces of Red, and um, all these uh, other films he's been in. Not to mention he's the son of uh, producer Samuel Goldwyn Jr., who's no longer with us. Adria Ajona. John C. McGinley, he's always been playing creepy roles. He's been in other films too, and TV shows like Scrubs. And he's also in a film kind of similar to this called Surviving the Game, and many others. <laughs> Melanie Diaz from the movie Be Kind, Be Wine, the comedy with um, Jack Black and Most Def. Yeah, I remember that comedy. I haven't seen her in a long time. Josh Brenner, David Del Rio, Rusty Schrimmer, Stephen Blackheart, Sean Gunn, and Michael Rooker. Yeah. It's written by James Gunn and it's directed by Greg McLean. The movie begins sitting in an office building called Belco Industries in Bogota, Colombia. We meet an employee named Mike Mulch, who's played by John Gallagher Jr., who has a girlfriend named Leandra Flores, who's, his, who's actually the assistant of his boss, uh, Barry Norris, who's played by Tony Goldwyn, who's the CEO for Belco. And Along with all the employees, which includes uh, Wendell Dukes, who's played by John C. McGinley, who's the top executive, and Bud Milks, who's the head of maintenance for Belco, who's played by Michael Hooker. Once they arrive, since they were only there for only a year or so, they begin to find something suspicious where we begin to see some new security guards that are very unfamiliar to them. They go around searching inside their cars, online, 
where everybody was inside the office building. We also meet uh, a new employee named Danny, who's played by Melanie Diaz, because this was her first day of the job. And it was also told that there's actually a tracking device that's being implanted on the back of their skulls. And every employee actually had those, where they actually put in some, some microchips inside. And I believe they also put some bombs inside as well. Which, apparently it's, it's this was the idea of, of drug trafficking and, and all this other stuff that's happening. Seeing that this is one of the biggest uh, companies uh, in Colombia. And they serve around the uh, Americans and, and South Colombians out there. Anyway. We also meet um, their head security guard, um, Evan, who's played by James Earl, who's beginning to see some suspicion behind those security guards because he, he doesn't even know who they are or all the other staffs out there. That is until Mike suddenly saw one of the guards by out of an airplane hangar next door, which apparently got everyone confused. And that's when we begin to hear a mysterious voice that's coming from the intercom of all the speakers around the entire building where we begin to hear that they only have nine hours in one day to kill all your employees so part of this was an experiment that they're about to face and they actually had shut down the entire building using all these steel shutters and they're all stuck inside with no way out they're trying to find a way to escape there was actually one that was open that was on top of the building that is until we begin to find out that one of the employees had their heads exploded by the bombs that were hidden inside the implanted chips so Mike decided to take um, a utility knife to take the tracking device out of the back of his skull just to find out what these tracking devices are and then everyone else is trying to do the same but the mysterious voice had warned him not to do that but he was lucky because all the other staffs uh, had gotten killed because of uh, the tracking device alone that they set off. So they killed all the co-workers out there and then they're going to be killed even more at random. All the bosses out there are trying to find out what's happening and what's going on and they're trying to find a way to get out of there. But it gets even worse when they decide to continue to go on and on killing them which also includes um, uh, Bud Milks, which his partner got completely nervous that he actually accidentally uh, knocked him with his wrench and that's where we see like a big gapping hole on his skull and he dies yeah very messed up So they're trying to find a way to survive until all the all the workers out there are just bringing their weapons, you know, such as knives, guns, all this other equipment that they have, and they just continue to go on as as it seems to get rid of like 80 of them already, and then they have to go for even more after that. Um, so now Barry as well as Wendell and all the rest of them decided to uh, team up to actually start killing some more workers yeah, all at random just shooting them all completely including the older staffs and that's where we hear all, all the uh, the orchestrated uh, music that's played in the background they also have played some uh, Spanish music as well of of all the 
of all the songs like I Will Survive in a way. I love I love the choice of music that they got. But all of them were trying to hide against all the other um, employees that are going after them. So they continue to go on one by one, killing them all. And then Mike is trying to find a way to survive along with the rest of them, you know, before it gets worse. Yeah, I'm just going to stop right here because I don't want to give away too much of the movie. But I got to say, this was pretty well done. And interesting enough, uh, the only CGI effect that they use was the steel shutters. While <laughs> the rest of the movie, they actually use um, a lot of food coloring for the blood. So you can tell that they didn't use CGI blood at all. So they really did use a lot of practical effects throughout the entire movie. So it works. And even though it is uh, built up as a horror movie, it does have several action scenes that they put into it. So there's a lot of violence and gore and very brutal too in the movie. You know, where all their heads are being shot, exploded and... You know, they, they get stabbed all around. It, wow, well, it, it was like a brutal massacre right there. And then we begin to find out that the executives alone were, becomes the villains themselves. So they're actually in on this because the mysterious voice told them to. While, um, while Mike is, is actually the hero throughout the entire movie, even though he doesn't want to kill anybody. I don't blame him. I feel sorry for him too because you know he's trying to spend his entire day trying to escape and try to save everybody from being killed by all the other co-workers out there. It was it was interesting. And James Gunn was known for doing a lot of uh, satirical jokes that he put into um, all of his movies, including the Slitter. Yeah, where he basically takes that particular material you know, of using all these um, slugs and and he started to and all these uh, grotesque uh, creatures that they created, and they just use a lot of satirical jokes that are hilarious. That makes it into a horror comedy all the way. I was expecting uh, the Belko experiment to have that, but it did, but it was only a few. So the rest of the film just became way too serious. And I, I feel like that was the problem, because they should have had made it more satirical to make the story more interesting. But it is interesting nevertheless, because I actually did love the concept that they came up with. I mean, I thought it worked. It, it is like Battle Royale, except it's set inside an office building instead of being outside of the jungle as part of the game. And I thought that worked so well, too. And it was great to see uh, Tony Goldwyn in a movie like this, because I know he has done some several work that he has in his career. I mean, I know he did the, the horror remake of The Last House on the Left. That's probably the last time I ever saw him in that, and he was good. And he's definitely good here. Almost remind me of his of the villain that he played in Ghost. Only uh, he started out as a nice guy, but then he just turns out to be the villain. And he's, like, all of this was, was a setup. Like, we know for the fact that this guy is up to no good. Yeah. It's also great to see John C. McGinley in this movie. I mean, he's always been playing like creepy roles these days. I mean, he's always been known for that. But it's great to see him actually play that particular role exactly as I expected. And it's also good to see Michael Worker in this movie, even though it was a relatively small role for him. And, and it's sad that we we don't get to see more of him. Uh, Melanie Diaz was was there for 
for the entire film until the last moments, and I don't want to give that away either. But I know she was trying to find a way to hide from all these workers, you know, going around killing them. And John Gallagher Jr., you know, he's the star of this movie. I mean, he's the real star. He's, he's very good, I mean, as the lead. And it really shows how he actually uh, had tried to find a way to survive and try to save someone before it's too late. Until what happens at the end of the movie. And also... Um, I also thought uh, Andrea Jonah did a great job playing the, his girlfriend. Yeah, even though uh, Wendell just keeps uh, stalking her, you know, by by typing up uh, all the texting and everything, just or at this rate, uh, <laughs> uh, just using the messenger on the computer, you know, asking her to go out with him, but you know. She was not interested. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was a bit of an asshole too. Oh well. <laughs> uh and there is a twist in the movie that um it seems really interesting to find out um, who the mysterious voice is. But it did have a familiar actor that I've known who it is. I don't want to say who it is per se, but I just don't want to give away the surprise who this mysterious person is. So I just want to let you know that there is someone very familiar. <laughs> However, I wish the ending was done better. And I mean the ending after that. was. It just feels like you know, this was like a cop-out, like they just set it up for a so-called sequel that's that they were going to plan on, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, I, I don't like these kind of endings because I feel like, you know, th this whole thing just, you just feel ripped off. Like, like it's a kick in the nuts type of situation right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, man, but... This, this movie deserved better than that. But, this, and of course, you know, it, it did have some random typical, typical scenes in there that didn't need to be there. I, I understand, because they had to go for some, I guess they were just using it as part of a joke, but that's okay. There's even a scene where there's one employee started to empty all the water pitchers around the entire office because... He suspected that there might be some chemical inside that actually might kill them all. So they never know by dumping it all around the floor. Yeah. Kind of is a smart move right there because you never know what they put inside the wall. And I, I know it does get over the top, and it was meant to be over the top. Of all the violence and gore that's in there. And you definitely feel sorry for all the employees that were that didn't really deserve to be killed one by one. Yeah, they really didn't deserve this. And I feel sorry for them too because, you know, they get killed for no reason. But it had to happen. And that's sad. But other than that though, I thought it was an enjoyable film. It was very good. And it definitely uh, kept the edge of my seat, and I wasn't disappointed. It's definitely what I expected, and plus it's um, a fast-paced thriller, and it works. Anyway, uh, check out the movie by any chance. Uh, just uh, buy it on Blu-ray or DVD, um, and hopefully I'll pick it up uh, later on if I get a chance. Uh, I hope I do. But check this movie out. Um, you definitely won't be disappointed. I said maybe for a few, but it's worth it. So anyway, I give the Belco Experiment four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.